Science Week at the Royal Kent School in Surrey and a team of professional engineers is sharing their expertise with children across the school. These science and engineering ambassadors are volunteers who work alongside teachers to help motivate pupils and to raise attainment in science and technology. Which object gives the best reflection? A mirror. A mirror, perfect. They've done some work earlier in the week so that they know that light travels in straight lines and today we've been looking at uh, what happens if light hits a mirror that's curved, for instance, so they've learned about convex and concave shapes. Right, what did you have for this symbol then? Who could describe its surface? Shiny, rough and opaque. The mirror. For the mirror I put smooth and shiny. Some of the activities I hadn't done before, so it's always useful to have somebody else in who can sort of inspire you with different ideas that perhaps you haven't used before. Her subject knowledge is more intense possibly than mine, so she was able to really take them perhaps that one step beyond that, that I might have done. Everybody know what a right angle is? It has to be like a corner of a box, like That's that. And we'll also try putting the mirrors like this so that the little person, the little figure, is standing between them. And we'll see what happens then. We have some two mirrors and John is, um, is attaching them together to um, make them sort of like, uh, like that, like a right angle. And then we put the line in it and see how many reflections there are. The light bounces onto the mirror and then it bounces into your people and it goes into your brain and it turns it the right way up. if you make it a narrower angle? We can see one, two, five now. Five, well done. Tell me when to stop. Stop. What we're doing is we're putting a marble in the cup and then we're taking back and waiting, leaning like this and seeing when we can't see the marble. Then we take it back and we force a marble in and see what happens to the marble. They've been really excited. They've worked so hard. They've concentrated hard and they've worked well in groups. There's been a lot of teamwork going on. They've done really well. When you added more water, it made the light refract or bend further so that you could suddenly see the bead again. And that's due to the refraction of the light. And it just happens where the air, which, is, which you can see through, meets the water, which you can see through. It inspires the children to perhaps think about, you know, maybe one day being scientists themselves. And uh, they respond very well, usually, to having somebody different for a day in their classroom. Standing up in front of a whole classroom of kids when I first started was really daunting. I don't know how teachers do it day in, day out. Often the teachers will say, we use a particular technique. Um, it is hard. It is, it's, it's like your worst boardroom meeting. <laughs> An engineer, by definition, is a person who uses science to achieve an aim. Today we're going to use scientific principles to make a water rocket. Anyone have any ideas how we can aid it to fly through the air? Um, when it goes up in the air it hits um, the flat bit and then it slows it down. That end is the wrong end. That end is oh. where the water's coming out. So it's there. That's correct. Aerodynamics? Aerodynamics, that's the word. So you could be an aerodynamic engineer because you understand the principles. Engineering, unfortunately, is a dying art in this country and not very many people appear to want to go into it. So when I was given the opportunity to try to push the case for engineering, 
I was very keen to do it. This is a device we're going to use to launch the bottle. The bottle sits in there like that. So you can see that we don't want the fins to interfere with how it goes into the launcher. So if you could make sure when you put your fins on, they're above the beginning of the curve of the neck. I think then, Mr. Palmer, that uh, we will begin. We can start. So you've got your cardboard under your desk. Okay, so if you get your boxes out, you've got your scissors, you've got your designs, off you go. A charity called Setpoint organises visits by science ambassadors. As part of the preparation for the plan of the week, we'll come into the score and ask the science coordinator or the head what they want to cover. And then we'll look at the aspects and the topics they want, look at our resources and match our activities in to meet their requirements. And how many fins are you going to have? Three. And you're going to put a design on it, are you? Good. I was very surprised after spending a day on my feet talking to children, walking around class, how tiring teachers must find it. And now I find it daunting, but I've got used to it a little bit. We now got to do the final task of making your rocket, which is a nose cone. Hold the card, hold the two corners, and bring them in together to make a cone. Make sure there's no gap there, so the sellotape covers the gap, and then we trim it round and put it on the nose of your bottle and hold it around with tape again. This is a really good lesson because we don't usually do things like this. It's really fun. We get to do some hands-on stuff rather than just like sitting and listening, which is really good because it's fun. You like listen to it more and remember it more. Have you got your phone yeah. oh, no. It's superb to have outside agencies offer their assistance to create a, a practical package. We've done quite a good double act here today. I feel that we've, we've both supported each other during the day and it's, it's been very beneficial for the children. I think the children today enjoyed themselves, which is one of the main aims. But they also got the chance to hear a few technical terms used and have the terms explained to them and then put them terms into use by building and then firing the water rocket. We used air pressure to push the water out when it got to a certain pressure and cause the rocket to lift off the pad. I told them a few basic laws of physics, Newton's law, reaction and action, explained that water cannot be compressed and we talked about the fairness of the test. This is a cable that would feed the power to a city. And I worked for a big company that looked after all the power in England and basically made sure that the electricity supply to the major cities and towns was a safe supply and was always there, nice and reliable. So that's the background to what I did when I was working in industry. But I also have quite a lot of interest in sailing. I've worked with Setpoint for about four years and I've been to half a dozen schools in the area and each time I've taken a different project I've enjoyed doing it every time and they all work out very nicely. The general idea was that the pupils would take um, some building materials and from that make a land yacht. A land yacht basically is a, a trolley with four wheels that runs smoothly and straight and on that you mount a mast and sails. If you're trying to push something, what stops you pushing it very fast? Have you got any ideas? Friction. Yes. You've got to make sure that everything rolls smoothly, haven't we? When we put the wheels on, we've got to make sure they don't stick on anything. This cotton wheel will hold the mast stable and we don't need any ropes from the top of the mast. But what we do need is we need the ropes that come from the corners of the sail. The idea is that the straws will go in the cotton wheel which will be down here and then we're going to be building a triangular sail which on this boat is that one there. Setpoint basically set up the links with the schools and they provide us with the briefing documents on all the different projects and the school provides all the materials. Which one's easier, the square sail or the triangle? There are two sorts of sail on this particular boat. Well, the square sail was easier because that's what ships used to have in the past. And what we've got now is the triangular sails because they're more efficient at going towards the wind if you have to.
ambassadors, our engineers, who are true volunteers who come and give their expertise, their time for free to the schools, to the children, because they really wish to share their experiences, get the children interested in engineering, hoping that they will follow into the profession. We got a piece of polystyrene and we stuck this um, cotton wheel on it and then we got two straws and we stuck them together and then we put a bit of blue tack on the bottom and stuck it into the cotton wheel. Then we got two straws and drew the middle of them in it and the sail will go like that. And now we're designing the sail on a boat called the Dwight. And we just put, at the moment, we're just putting loads of colours on. Because we had a bit chopped off on the bottom, I thought it would be a good idea in case that one breaks to make a little lifeboat. I think where you're working, four of you together, trying to build something and make it work, it's good because that's how things actually happen in the industry. Lots of people are involved and you need to be able to work with other people. The actual concepts of science don't change, but how you get them over and how they're implemented in schools do change. And I think that this sort of start to science education is a very helpful one. We put wings on so that it would glide more like an aeroplane. Ready, steady, go. This opportunity of mixing DT, design technology, with forces, wind resistance, friction on wheels, and they can make something and race them. A bit of element of competition, but it's good for the children to make something they can take away and have an objective at the end of the day. We're going to come back and see if we can make it even faster. By putting on more sails. What sort of sails do you think you'd like? That's triangular. Um, the sail, it, it was bending about in the fan's wind. So we decided to make it a bit more secure by um, putting, putting a bit more blue tech on it. Right, we're all going to go down to the hall now to test our land yacht. So could I start with these tables lining up first of all, please? The teacher runs the project effectively and the engineer comes along to illuminate it and make sure that the thing rolls along smoothly. You come along to give a different view. When I say go, that's when you let your land yacht go free and we'll see how long it takes to do a six metre race. Go! Okay, so Jasmine's got a new distance, which is 4.0. Go. Being a science ambassador gives you the chance of helping young children at the stage when they're still forming their concepts about how the world works and what the important things are. And I think it's nice that people come in and give them some insight into different industries, because that wasn't available in years past. 